All right, let's move away from Ghana now to South Africa, where a serial killer, alleged serial killer, Rosemary, Rosemary Rundovu, was back in court this week. And this time, he's accused of plotting the murder of two police officers and a friend's husband. Rundovu was recently conf uh, convicted of murdering five family members and a former lover for insurance. She also plotted the murder of her sister and her kids, but was caught out when the hitman she hired told the police about the plans. It's a fascinating and strange story. And joining us now to give us more detail is South African journalist and editor, Diane Hawker. Good morning, Diane. It's good to have you again. Good morning. Good, good morning. to be with you again. Yes. Now, Diane, let's go straight into it. Let's start with the initial case. How did people learn about Rosemary Ndovu's crimes? Well, it was, a, it was a fascinating story that was unfolding um, in the high court here in Johannesburg. Um, you know, Rosemary Ndlovu was uh, basically turned in by the men that she had hired uh, to, to murder her sister. And the police conducted a sting operation where they essentially had an undercover police officer posing um, as if he is a hitman. Um, and she was recorded actually explaining what she wanted to have done. Her plan was to have her sister and her sister's children killed. And she actually told the police, uh, the police officer was posing as a hitman, um, that it would be better to set them alight because they live in a, in a rural area and that would cause less suspicion as opposed to, um, you know, if they were shot or if there was a robbery or something like that. Um, she was unaware that that whole conversation was being recorded by the police and ultimately that actually led to her arrest. Now, I think a very interesting thing also about Rosemary and Lovie is that she is a former police officer. Um, and it also emerged in court that, you know, during the course of her work as a police officer, that is actually how she met the hitman that she eventually tried to hire. I am going to pick my jaw from the floor in a bit. Um, so she is already seven times behind bars, but now she faces new charges. Now, tell us about these uh, latest uh, charges against her. Yes, absolutely. She was convicted um, in relation to the previous murders. You know, once this um, plot against her sister was uncovered, the police then started looking at her history and they found out that there were several strange deaths um, in her family. Five family members who had died and she was the beneficiary for all of those insurance claims. Um, and a former uh, partner of hers also, um, she had collected insurance on him. Um, and, you know, what has now transpired is that she also um, allegedly tried to have the police officer who, is, who was investigating her to have him killed. Um, and also allegedly tried to have a former station commander at the police station uh, where she worked Killed. And uh, there is also an allegation now with the recent allegations um, that um, she was planning to assist a, f a friend and colleague to actually have her husband um, killed. And he was uh, uh, present at court yesterday. He spoke to some journalists outside court um, and indicated, you know, that this whole matter has completely destroyed his life. Um, his children are terrified um, of, of his former wife, who uh, seemingly plotted to have him killed. Um, and obviously quite, quite a devastating uh, matter for that gentleman. Um, all right, Diane, aside the case of the murder or the plot to kill a lover because of insurance. Do we have a reason why Rosemary Ndovu is going about with these killings? Has she been subjected to any psychiatric evaluation whatsoever? Well, the, the motives um, were mainly to get insurance money, which seemingly she used for various things. We heard in court that she did gamble quite a lot and she was seen um, at some casinos um, in, in, in and around Johannesburg. And seemingly she just wanted to sort of supplement her lifestyle and live a, a more extravagant lifestyle. She didn't necessarily make a lot of money. Uh, the court uh, was told that it was only about 1.4 million rand um, you know, from these cases. So the insurance amounts were relatively low. But of course, this is 1.4 million rand that she would not have had had she not um, actually committed these crimes and killed these people. Okay, now we're talking about her lifestyle. I mean, it's interesting that you're mentioning her lifestyle, her extravagant lifestyle. There have been comments about her makeup and hair on social media. Why is this uh, coming up? Since she went to jail, that is. Yes, um, absolutely. People have been commenting about how, with her most recent court appearances, she's actually looking extremely well-kept. 
um, considering that she's a convicted, uh, uh, you know, criminal. Um, she often appears in court in new hairstyles. Her makeup is always done uh, to the T. And it also reminds me a little bit about the story of Anna Delby, where, you know, every time she appeared in court, she had a different outfit um, and people always used to comment on it. So in the South African context, there's been a lot of interest shown in how she's gone to court looking uh, quite well kept, even though she is serving time in prison. It's, uh, it's, it's really shocking, you know, and every detail, you know, every you know, new detail of the case just completely uh, shocks you. Um, what's likely to happen, you know, with these latest charges? Well, in the latest case, I know that the police have had some difficulty because one of the witnesses that they were hoping to have um, has apparently not been uh, contactable. So the police have been struggling um, in relation to, to one of the cases that she's currently charged for. Um, however, the case was postponed to next week, the 31st of May, and hopefully there will be more of an update. Um, Rosemary Lovo has also been struggling to get legal um, representation. Her previous lawyer is not representing her in this matter. And she has asked that, um, you know, the state provide some, uh, uh, you know, legal counsel for her via, um, like, the free legal aid body that exists here in South Africa. So, so next week, you know, the question will be whether she does have that lawyer available, um, as well as whether the, the, the state is ready to proceed and whether they have all the witnesses that they need to actually prosecute um, these current charges. All right, Diane, thank you for joining us. Always a delight to have you. We will, of course, love to have you again when we have an update on, on the story of our Rosemary Indovo. Absolutely. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. And happy Africa Day. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right.